we've also seen a number of thematic discussions and developments that are of, of great importance for the Council's work and for human rights defenders around the world. The Council at this session, its 19th session, held a panel discussion on sexual orientation and gender identity. Um, this came about as a result of a resolution that was passed at the 17th session of the Council. Unfortunately, several states, or more than several states, chose not to engage on the topic. Um, the OIC, many of their members, that's the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and many of them chose not to engage at all. They actually staged a mass walkout as soon as the panel um, began, which was a great shame. But the result was that those states who were left in the room were generally supportive of these issues, and so it was quite a constructive um, exchange in the end. First of all, all states, even Pakistan, said that, um, and Pakistan has been very traditionally opposed to these issues, um, said that violence on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity is never acceptable. Another point raised was um, made by Hina Jilani, um, the former Special Representative of the Secretary General on Human Rights Defenders, who emphasised that it's important to remember those who work on behalf of people of uh, certain sexual orientation or gender identity, um, that those defenders face particular risks because of the work that they're doing. Another point raised um, by states who were generally supportive of these issues was they, they came out very, very clearly against the position that Pakistan and the OIC have taken, that this is not a human rights issue, that this is something that doesn't fall within the international human rights framework. And one of the panellists, Mr Lawrence Helfer, who's a professor of international law, stated very clearly that the default position of international law is that it applies to all persons, and nowhere in international law does it say that this excludes of people on the basis of their sexual orientation and gender identity. Another issue raised was the issue of trans people, and that's quite significant because um, that issue, even more than sexual orientation, has really struggled to get prominence and acceptance at the international level. So it was, it was actually disappointing that there wasn't a panellist who was a dedicated representative of trans persons, but nevertheless, um, one of the panellists was able to represent their is issues quite competently. A number of other themes that are relevant to human rights defenders uh, were discussed and decided on at this session of the Council. First and foremost, the resolution on the promotion and protection of human rights in the context of peaceful protest. The resolution mandates the Office of the High Commissioner to draft a report on best practices and measures in which human rights can be guaranteed even in the context of peaceful protest. The Council has also adopted a resolution on human rights, democracy and the rule of law and has in that resolution urged states to create an enabling environment for human rights defenders so that they can fully play their role and contribute to democracy and the rule of law. Freedom of expression on the internet was also the subject of a dedicated panel discussion which clearly affirmed that internet rights are human rights and that the same standards of freedom of expression that apply offline should also apply online. The 19th session was also the scene of uh, a targeted campaign of intimidation and reprisals against human rights defenders from Sri Lanka. Of course, this is not the only context in which this issue is a problem and where reprisals occur. It is particularly important when looking ahead at the September session, when the Council will hold a dedicated debate on how to deal with reprisals, that states, NGOs and UN representatives are particularly attentive to alleged cases of reprisals so that the Council has a solid basis from which to then decide on how to counter this issue. It's only a few months until the next session of the Human Rights Council. In June, the 20th session of the Council is expected to hear the first report of the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Assembly and Association. We are also likely to see a follow-up resolution to the panel on sexual orientation and gender identity, so the session promises to be one full of surprises and heavy debates.